Guts here. In this video, I want to talk to you about drafting. Um, it may be a bit meta-wise, but it's basically an observation I've noticed for an eternity in Dota, pretty much in pro Dota because I don't really watch other games. It kind of applies to pubs, but it's a mistake that I find I could point out and justify with an explanation so I'm just gonna do that right now so the main thing with drafting is that pros are just like us and sometimes they fuck up you know you take a risk doing something and it never works but what I don't understand about this kind of drafting is the thought process behind it because I've tried numerous times to figure out why it happens but it never plans out the way that it should um, and in pubs I see it all the time so this draft right here is an example of a pro game where drafting was highly questionable so in this case it's secret against team liquid and ESL one catalyst and as you can see here it's just a draft pretty much of entirely supports so Drafting can always take curveballs when people throw heroes that throw off your game and then it changes what you want to do and you have to draft according to that. But in this scenario, I feel like Team Secret Puppy put himself in a hole by doing so. And a lot of people will say, oh, well, you know, it might have been the team asking for... Yeah, yeah, but Puppy's the drafter, so he has to take responsibility. This is a failed draft, in my opinion, because... The main way I could dictate a failed draft just by my thousands of pub games alone, and in this scenario, this isn't even just a mostly supports scenario versus Liquid's draft. Um, a lot of people say the Broodmother last pick or whatever fucked over Secret's draft, but that's not even what truly makes this a fucked up draft. The main thing that makes this fucked up is this guy over here, Terrorblade. So he's an illusion hero. And he's a carry, ranged, that murders towers. Terrorblade is like the ultimate late game carry. And I guess you could say, well, you know, Secret was going for the early mid game, you know, just stomp, dominate. But when you have a Terrorblade, you instantly secure against Secret's draft, you instantly secure the late game. It doesn't even matter how bad. Like, Team Secret could have shit stomped on Team Liquid. And they have all the resources needed to delay till this guy gets big. Which means you have to pretty much completely shit stomp Miracle's farm. But it's not going to happen. These are pros. They're going to find farm no matter what. So when you draft like this against the guy who can make with Manta like five super beefed up murderous illusions. With this draft, you lose. You lose at that point. So basically... When you draft like this, you put yourself in a scenario where, okay, I have to win this within 20 to 25 minutes, or the game's done. Because yes, Venge could technically carry late game, but that's just the nature of Terrorblade. He's an illusion hero. I want you to picture a Venge trying to hit a Terrorblade with items when there's five illusions around. It's not happening. You then have to result, resort to all these other heroes, but guess what? The enemies have heroes too. So they're not going to let you do that. Which basically, at one point or another, it's going to be this Venge man fighting this Terrorblade. And it's not happening. And then they threw the Brood on top of that. Brood literally murders single target support heroes. This was a four, technically a four support hero draft. Single targets. Like, these guys don't make illusions. They don't have escapes. Maybe Venge. But these, these three don't have escapes. Brood murders you. And Brood also murders... Batrider. But that was a curveball, so we're not going to blame it on Brood. If we take out the Brood from this picture, I still think it's this draft is superior simply because of the Terrorblade. Like, you need... Like, if you had a Chaos Knight carry, you could at least burst him instantly. But if you had some AoE clear, like Seven, Ember Spirit, maybe someone who locks down or bursts really fast, like an Ursa would suffice. But even then... I don't think Urso could do it. You need someone who's able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe late game with a Terrorblade. Otherwise, you're cutting yourself short. And I think pros do this all the time. It's like a gamble. You know, you do these early game drafts, and then you're fighting an Animage, and he wins late game kind of thing, right? They do it all the time. But I feel 
it never works out when they do it. Like I remember EG back in TI four with Mason on team and stuff. They're doing like these all in Veno pushes, and if they didn't win when they're pushing racks at fifteen minutes, they just called GG because at that point it's over. You're not beating their late game course. It's over. And I feel, even though pros are more likely to execute this kind of a draft, where it's the basically the Hail Mary all-in kind of draft, it never works. So they should just at least have one hero who could maybe do late game and a bit of early. Like Gyro. Gyro's a hero that's good in all phases of the game. He's good in laning phase. You could put a Gyro instead of Engine. You could still kind of have that same effect in this of early game stomp that you're looking for. So I don't get it. I think Terrorblade's the ultimate counter to any kind of these drafts. Let's look at another one, for example. Oh, fuck. Did I click watch? God damn it. Anyways, this one is going to be Game 3, Liquid versus Team Secret again, actually. Or no, no, no. Virtus Pro, sorry. No broadcaster. We'll just skip so the draft is done. So it's game three as as we see. And here's the draft. How do I just view it? Okay, there we go. Look at this draft though. If it'll load. Please load. Load the heroes. Thank you. Look at this draft from Liquid. So the last game was Liquid. Or sorry, Secret losing the Liquid. This one's Liquid losing the Virtus Pro. And they literally do what Secret did. So you see this draft, you're thinking, oh, what's wrong with this? You know, Matumba on his Veno, which is very good. He scales late game. Miracle on his famous Huskar. Two things wrong with this draft. One, there's nothing to back up the Huskar. They're relying on a stupid Warlock heal and, you know, some pipes coming out. That's it. It's horrible. You need to have a Dazzle. You need to have an Oracle. Or Huskar loses half his power. He's just not worth it. And you'll say, oh, well, that's kind of an all-in. It is. That's what Huskar is. Huskar's an all-in hero. He can go late game. But again, if we look on this side of the board, there's a Terrorblade. He's got a nice KDR, just like the other game. Nice KDR. What was Miracle? 11-1 and one or something? 13-1? and one? Like... This draft, if you look at it, single target, single target, single target, single target, single target. Illusion hero. Guys to delay. Like... It doesn't work. Teams need to stop doing this. The only time this works is when there isn't a Terrorblade. So if we put... Um, I don't know, who's a tier 1 carry that's single target now? Lifestealer. If we put a life stealer here, this would be a totally fine game and a totally fine draft from Liquid. But when you put a Chaos Knight or a PL or a Terror Blade, you know, these guys that get illusions, even Luna, Frey, put Void with a Manta, same thing. If you put any of these heroes against a draft like this with a single target carry like a Huskar or a Venge, it's over. You automatically lose late game. So it doesn't even matter how the early game goes. Or the mid game. Even if you do really well. If you don't close it out, they're going to win. Just because they're pros. In pubs, different story. I've had games where I'm an Ursa and I'm clobbering illusion heroes because they're just really bad. But in pro games, no, no, no. They're getting farm and you will lose. And pros keep doing this. It's these stupid, technically all-in drafts. And I will repeat myself once more. It's fine if the opponents have a single target carry. Even with DP with reels and shit, it's fine. This draft would have been okay. But when there's a Terrorblade, you do not, do not draft this. Because I want you picturing a Huskar versus five Terrorblade illusions beating into him. It's not going to happen. What, what kills these illusions ASAP here? You think mind control is going to do that? No. No, no, no. GH definitely is it. A rock ain't going to change nothing. You'll be able to figure out which is the real Terrorblade, but you're not going to kill these illusions fast enough for before Miracle murders, gets murdered by Ramses. Like, it's just, it doesn't work. At all. The second thing I want to point out, 
which is not to do with drafting and stuff. I hope I've uh, drilled that one into the ballpark. Basically, stop picking Huskar when the opponents have ultimate late game like Animage and Terrorblade. It doesn't work. It just don't. Don't do it. Get someone who goes late game just in case that the early game does go well. And, oh, and the other thing before we move on that I always notice, they always do well early game, the team with the late game one, even when this draft happens. It always happens. It happened in the secret one. Like, secret just got eviscerated. It was probably the best example of what I'm trying to uh, prove my case. This one, not so much. It was a little more even early game. But, look, 0-8, 2-8, 4-8, 0-7. Miracle's the only one that has an impact. It's like these four protect one drafts, except for the one isn't a terribly. And terribly's not even a good hero. He's got a really low win rate. And only Liquid has really good success with him. Other teams don't. It's like 38% or something. I don't know. In terms of pro scene. So it's not even like the hero is good. It's just... It's... it's You're just accelerating his effectiveness in a draft like this. The other thing I want to talk about... Which I can't really explain here. I'll just go to the heroes tab. Is... Pros being behind in the meta. And by the meta, I mean pub meta. So, I haven't really pre-prepped for this, but I'll try and give you an example. So right now, heroes that are big are like Morphling. So basically, well not really Morphling, but patch heroes. Heroes that are just good at the patch. Sometimes there's times when heroes sneak in and they're kind of, it's like they came out of nowhere kind of thing. Um, and that is when I'm saying that they're behind in the meta in terms of what pubs do. So... In pubs, for example, there was a time when Animage was a massive pain in the ass, okay? No pro would touch Animage. And about, like, four to six months later, all of a sudden, Animage is coming out. And, like, it's, like, four months of my pubs. I have to deal with, like, this annoying Animage that has this super short blink. the This uncontrollable early level illusion that gets made. Stuff like this. For four months, I'm just constantly losing to this. And if I pick it, like, whatever, I'm crushing kind of thing, right? And then all of a sudden, pros are like, wait a second. Let's do this. You know, it's in pubs. Let's try and transition this as a curveball in our drafts because we want to have a bit of success. We're not having too much success. And then they start having success, and Animage became meta. And what happens when he becomes pro meta? He gets nerfed. So he got nerfed completely falls off no one picks him anymore and they move on to the next hero and that's where you're starting to see these tear blades now although he's not great he hasn't been in the pro scene for a little while now since probably the envy days i'd say and now he's making a resurgence and he gets a slight nerf because of it but it's like these pros are behind and i get why they are it's because the pros have their own meta right so what pros draft and stuff isn't like your pubs because they're drafting based off of pro games and what pros are doing because pros don't think like pubbers do. But eventually they take stuff from their pubs and put it into their pro scene meta to try and throw curveballs. And yeah, that's basically it. Another example of that would be the Log and Bup Abaddon. So, that was directly taken from pubs. Like, that was created by Log and Bup. Completely, like, brand fucking new and fresh. No one's ever done this before kind of thing. Becomes a real pain in the ass, so then people start doing it. The Americas bring it in because that's where it gets invented from. And then, eventually, everyone's doing it. China's drafting it and stuff. Gets nerfed. Gets fallen off. Rinse and repeat. That's literally what happens in pro scene. They're always behind because they're too focused on their pro meta that they only do pub stuff until they absolutely need to do it kind of thing. So if I had to pick things that are happening right now in pubs that's really popular, there's a lot of Pudge support. And Pudge maybe six months ago was kind of in the pro scene with very little success but i think he'll start to get picked up more when people realize how good he is he did get an, a nerf actually kind of recently so maybe not because whenever a hero gets nerfed pros don't touch that hero for ages another one would be like axe 
I think Axe will make a resurgence. I haven't seen him too much in pubs, actually, so I can't actually say this, but I think Axe is still a really strong hero that's overlooked, just like Terrorblade. And he has a low win rate and stuff because people just aren't picking him enough. But when they start picking him more, he'll become really fucking good. Same with Monkey King. I see a lot of Monkey Kings in pubs, and Complexity is the only one who's really brought it out, and they do have really nice success with him. I still think Void Carry is very good. He's always picked in pubs. Actually, scratch out all the other heroes I just said. I think Void Carry will be the one that will make the resurgence. Because the pros did this dumb Vlads thing. And it fell off. But I know the Void Carry is going to come back. And it'll come back in six months. And it'll get nerfed. You know, Savent's kind of like that too. He's still a really strong hero. And I see him in pubs all the time. Pros will pick him. Spear Breaker, same thing. So. I probably could explain this a little better if I did my research in terms of the heroes and stuff. But I'm just trying to give you a general idea of what's going through pros' minds that a 4K doesn't agree with. And you might be like, oh, well, you know, you're 4K and they're 10K. What? You think they haven't thought about this stuff? Yeah, they're too busy focused on their pro scene. They're playing pubs a hell of a lot more than me. They play it every day. Like, if you're liquid, you're playing pubs all the time whenever you're not uh, training in, in tournaments. But, I mean, your pubs... Like, they're they're literally just a, a replica of your pro scene. You don't see stuff until 4Ks start bringing it into, like the upper brackets and then it transitions into that and then you pick it up six months later in your pro scene so as much as 4ks are garbage they do kind of dictate you know ahead of time what's good and what isn't same thing with bloodseeker bloodseeker was a really important one because he was picked non-stop and constantly just buffed in pubs and eventually the pros caught on and they just you know they're getting their like 13 minute radiances and just murdering and it's like, wait a second, this this has been going on for like six months. Why all of a sudden are they doing it now? You know, it wasn't just one fucking buff that did it. It was eventually over countless buffs. They're like, hmm, let's try this. You know, Ursa was the same same way. So it's kind of a ramble, but whatever. Just wanted to go over it. So, thanks for watching.